Hey, what's up everyone? It's me again. Uh, I've been working on this little project for a while, this game, and I needed a walk-on system for it. Now, I was doing some research, there's a lot of ways people have come up with doing a walk-on system, but they're all just, in my opinion, uh, dif difficult to get. Um, I've genuinely tried to understand them, I just can't. They all deal with, like, arrays and, like, storing bodies in a radius in an array. And then there's a bunch of complicated math involved. And I just don't really have the patience to learn that. Uh, so I, I started sort of doing my own research, piecing things together. And I found sort of a workaround. Um... I'm making this so that anyone looking for something similar maybe has an idea of how they can approach this. So basically what I have here, <clears throat> I have visible, visible collisions on so I can show you how this works. Uh, out in front of us we have a, an area, there's a ray cast as well, but the main thing here is we have a, an area with a raycast shape on it, right? And when a body enters at raycast, then that is stored. That body becomes a variable that we're currently calling a walk target. We're going to take a look at the code in a tiny bit, but basically... Before we get into this, this is the downside of using this system. I'm trying to figure out a way to fix this. I haven't found it yet. I'll update this video once I do. But you can walk on through walls with this system. That is the downside of as of now. Um, but basically, what we're doing here is when we walk onto our target, you can see this little ray cast. I don't know how visible it is on the actual recording. But it's kind of, it's following the orientation of our lock target. And then when I unlock, it returns to looking at the, the um, direction that it was previously. So, basically, let's hop into the code, and I'll explain this a little further. Okay, so we're back here. We're, uh, we're taking a look at the code now. Now, there's... It's a little unorganized. I probably should have done this a little differently. But, there are... Just a, just a few working parts to the system. First of all, down here we've got our lock-on area entered signal from our area node, basically. And you can see we've got some variables here. Body, that's a temporary variable from our little f signal function here. Uh, we're just accessing that. Enemy is a class that I've defined for our enemy. It's just taking a look to see if, if what we're looking at inherits from the base enemy script. And can walk. This, this one takes some explaining. This is a, another custom variable. Um, basically, can walk just dictates whether or not we can walk. It's pretty self-explanatory. But then we, we've got our, our lock target here. Combat mode, you don't have to worry about. That's part of my uh, combat system that I'm working on. But mainly what we're just taking a look at here is the lock target. That's all that really matters. So you can see that our lock target equals our body, aka the body that enters our lock-on area. 
So that's all that really is. And <clears throat> up here we have it, 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 it's a little confusing, but basically if we can walk right, and if our um my brain just died on me a second. If we can walk and all the conditions are met that are in our uh, lock-on signal function, then um, <clears throat> checks to see if we can walk onto the enemy if we're able to. And if we can, we take our lock-on container that is just uh, a node, it's a spatial node, that contains our area. It's sort of like the, the pivot point of it. That's the best way to think about it. And I'll show you the setup in a tiny bit here. I just want to get the code out of the way. But we're taking our, our lock-on container, just everything connected to our area and stuff, and we're having it look at our lock target, basically. And that's all, that's all it's doing, it's just constantly, every frame, this is in the physics process, for every frame, it's going to continue to update and look at our lock target. Now just real quickly, thinking backwards a bit, our lock target equals the body that we have collided with, that's basically it. <clears throat> and that's all it does. And then, uh, for the actual looking at it, we're just taking our entire character, our entire FPS controller, and we're just rotating it towards the lock-on container. So that's what creates that whole effect. So, really just thinking back on it real quick, <clears throat> uh, the lock-on area is telling our character what to look at. That's that's all this boils down to. And then this is a uh, another part of it here. This is for unlocking. So if we're in combat mode, if we're in combat mode, that means we're on we're uh, locked onto an enemy, basically. Uh, is that's that's part of my combat system, but basically. That just means we're, we are locked onto something. So if we're in combat mode and we press our lock on button, in this case on keyboard it's control, then we're just gonna take our lock on container and we're gonna look, we're gonna have it look at our lock default. Now all the lock default is, is it's a spatial node way in front of the character all right, and that just acts as, uh, well, the default orientation of uh, the, the area, basically. And here we just take all of our variables, can lock, combat mode, lock target. We, we set those all to false, and lock target is null. We don't want that to have a... Uh, a value of any kind. And then our lock timer. All this does is we have can lock false. That means we can't lock on anything as long as this is false. So after we unlock from an enemy, while this is false, we start a timer. And once this timer runs out, all we're doing is setting can lock back to true. Okay, so it just creates kind of like a loop, you know? So that's how I, I reset everything. <clears throat> and that's pretty much all there is to it, really. It's a pretty simple system. I'll show you my node setup real quickly just to try to make 
little more sense of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so basically you can see our, um, our lock-on container here. <clears throat> and then all that's holding is our lock-on area and the collision shape for, um, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> our collision shape for the area, basically. And then, way forward, if I can find it in this list, it's kind of a mess. Oh yeah, lock on default, here it is. So it's just a spatial node, way in the front of the character, that just acts as the default orientation of our container here. So when we unlock, it will just look at the spatial node over here. And that is really all there is to it. I hope this video gave you some ideas. Maybe you're looking for something similar to this. Um, it's got flaws. I admit I'm working on ironing those out. Some bug fixing. There are some frame drops. Specifically with, I've noticed, um, locking on through walls. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I don't even think my system is really what's causing that. I think it has to do with a ray cast in the container as checking for walls. I was kind of doing some testing with that. <clears throat> but, just know there are some flaws. This works a better... I'd assume in like some kind of top-down uh, game scenario. But that, that's all I really have to share. I hope this helps somebody see y'all.